Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 6, Lesson 2, Truth and Equations. Let's use equations to represent stories and see what it means to solve equations. So first off, we have this one called three letters. It says the equation A plus B equals C could be true or false. If A is 3 and B is 4 and C is 5, is the equation true or false? Well, let's just see here. So if A is 3, we would say 3 plus B's value is 4 equals c's value of 5. Well, what is 3 plus 4? Well, 3 plus 4 happens to be what? It happens to be 7. So this would be a false statement or a false equation there, right? Just because it has letters or variables doesn't mean that the variables are always going to work out the right way. You have to make sure it's going to be a true statement there in order to be a real equation. If it's not, it's false and it just won't work out. It says find new values of a, b, and c that make the equation true. So you could say that a equals 3, b equals 4, and c equals 7. And that would be true because 3 plus 4 does equal 7. Now can you figure out some that would make the equation false? You probably can. Again, think of three numbers that would make it false. If a is equal to 2 and b equals 4, and we say c equals 10. Well, is 2 plus 4 equal to 10? No, that's not true, so that would be a false statement there. Okay, so those are nice letters. You could put the numbers in there, but it doesn't always end up being true, so we have to be careful about that. We could do the same thing with multiplication um, problems as well. It says that this, could, this equation, x times y equals z, could be true or false. If it's x is 3, y is 4, z is 12, that becomes 3 times 4 equals 12. Is that true or false? Well, 3 times 4 is what? 3 times 4 is actually 12, so that's going to be a true statement. It says find new values of x, y, and z to make it true. So think about two things you can multiply together and what that solution is going to be. So perhaps x is equal to 2, y equals 4, and then z would equal, to be true, 2 times 4 is 8, and that would work out okay, because 2 times 4 equals 8. Can you think of 3 that would make it false? Sure. Think of two numbers you multiply together, maybe 5 times 4, and that's your x, and that's your y. And instead of saying the correct answer would be 20, you could say 15 for z, and that would be a false statement. That does not actually work out. And that's important to recognize that when you're dealing with an equation, an equation needs to be true. If it's not going to be true, then it's not really an equation, and you got something a little bit off you have to adjust. Okay, let's look at the next activity. The next activity is called story time, and it says here are three situations and six equations. And so the six equations are down on the bottom. They're down over here. These are our six equations. And it says which equation best represents each situation. And if you get stuck, draw a diagram. So here we have a first one. After Elena ran five miles on Friday, she had run a total of 20 miles for the whole week. She ran X miles before Friday. So in this picture here, we could do something like this. We know that she ran five miles on Friday. That's great. We know she ran X miles before Friday, whatever that's gonna be. And she had a total of 20 miles. So in our case here, we're looking at something along the lines of 5 plus x is going to get you to 20. Okay, and that's the equation we're looking for. So we look down below, what do we see? I have a 5 and an x together. Sure, I have them right here. They put it in the form of x plus 5 equals 20. The order's not important there. That's going to be okay. It equals 20. The only one, the other one that equals 20 is right here. 5x times 20, and this is not 5 groups of x, this is 5 plus x, or like it says on there, x plus 5 equals 20, and that's what we would use. So we're going to use that one first. Let's look at situation number 2. Andre's school has 20 clubs, which is 5 times, 5 times, as many as his cousin's school. His cousin's school has x clubs. So for his cousin's school, they have x clubs, but we know that in our case here, Andre has five times that much. So I'm going to repeat this five times. Three, 
4, 5. So what do I have? Well, that's going to be 20 clubs. So thinking of it this way, 5 times x is going to be equal to 20. 5 groups of x would be 20. What's, what I can start doing here is this. I don't have to keep that multiplication sign there. I could actually write this as 5x equals 20. And when I have the number next to the variable, it's the same as meaning I'm going to multiply those two things together. And that's okay. It's all right to write it in this way without the little multiplication symbol. This means I'm going to multiply. We do call that first number right there a coefficient. Okay, just so you kind of have a know what that term is. So the number in front of a variable is a coefficient. If I had no number there, there's always a 1. Even if you don't see a number, there's always a 1 there. Okay, so this would be a good one here. Do I see an 5x equals 20? Sure. Right there, that's the one that goes there. Number three, Jada volunteers at the animal shelter. She divided five cups of cat food equally to feed five cats. So what did she do? She had five, feed five cats, feed 20 cats. She had five cups of cat food, and she's going to divide that for 20 cats so everybody gets X amount of food. Now when we look over here, we don't see five divided by 20 equals X, do we? Nope, we don't see it. So what else could that be? Well, if I was to change the order of operations around a little bit and saying five, instead of saying five divided by 20 equals X, I could also say five equals 20 times X. Why? Because again, to get this divided by 20 over to there, think about the opposite. So instead of dividing by 20, it's multiplied by 20 over here. So do I see that anywhere? Sure I do. It's in this order here, 20x equals 5. And that's how that one works out right there. No problem at all. All right, so now let's look at some terms here real quick. It says here are some equations that contain a variable and a list of values. So variable is going to be a letter of some sort, right? A or X. Think about it, what each equation means and find a solution in the list of values. And so we can see down here we have our equations and a list of values. If you get stuck, you can draw a diagram. So for our first one, we have 1,000 minus something equal minus a equals 400. So think of it this way: if we went reverse, we'd have 400 plus an a is going to get you to 1,000. So 400 minus the a amount gets you to 400. Or the other way, it's really 1,000 minus 400 tells you what the value of a is, which is going to be 600. And that's right here. For number 2, 12.6 equals b plus 4.1. Again, that's like saying I have a b and I have a 4.1 and they're going to combine together to give me 12.6. So to find out what b is, I could do 12.6 and I could take away 4.1 to see what's left. And when I do that, I get 8.5. So number 1 is 600, 2 is 8.5. For this one, 8 times what number gets you to 8? Well, generally, if you want the same solution there, the C is going to have to be equal to 1. All right, over here, we have 2 thirds times D equals 10 ninths. So in order to get those apart, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, times 3 over 2. So this all cancels. So over here, we can reduce 2 goes into 10 five times, and 3 goes into 9 three times, so I'll up with D equals 5 thirds. So we use the 1, we use the 8.5, and now the 5 thirds. Over here, 10 times something is going to equal to 1. It's a great question here. So think of it like this. I want to equal to 1. I have 10. How to make it equal to 1? I divide it by 10. Or, in our case here, this is 10 um, times 1 tenth. Because 10 times 1 is 10 over 10, so I'm looking for 1 tenth. I could also think of this saying, I divide both sides by 10, and E equals 1 tenth. Now, if you look over here, 1 tenth is not there as a fraction, but it sure is the decimal. So 0 0.1. On this next one, this is 5 tenths. 
So we think of it as 5 tenths F. And if I want to get this to separate, I multiply by the reciprocal on both sides times 10 fifths. Okay. And so you have 100 divided by 5, which is equal to 20. 100 divided by 5 is equal to 20. And this next one here we have, we're going to add g to this side, add g to this side. So I have g plus 0.99 equals 1. And then we'll subtract 0.99 from both sides. So 1.00 minus 0.99 is equal to 0.01, or 1 one-hundredth. We already used 20. That's there. And then finally, number 8, I'm going to subtract 3 sevenths from 1. If I think of 1 as being 7 over 7, that's a whole number, then I have 7 minus 3 is 4. The denominator stays the same. 4 sevenths is our solution. All right, so lots of equations there to solve. Lots of different solutions, but things that you can certainly do. You'll have more like this on your homework. Let's take a look at our summary. Says an equation, just keep this in mind, can be true or false. All right, we saw that in our examples, depending upon what those variables are going to be. An equation can have a letter in it. And that letter is referred to as a variable. When a, a variable makes an equation true, it's called a solution. If it's not true, it's not a solution. The other thing we talked about is what's called a variable. The number written next to a variable is called a coefficient. If no coefficient is written, the coefficient is 1. So those are all important things we talked about today in the lesson. We're going to pause there to give you a chance to work on your homework, and we'll come back and check in together in just a few minutes. All right, homework check time. Select all the true equations, which means it has to actually work. So 5 plus nothing equals nothing. That is not true. 15 times 0, well, any number times 0 equals 0, so that is a true statement. 1.4 plus 2.7 equals 4.1. I don't know. Let's find out. Add those together. 7 plus 4 is 11. Decimal is there. 1 plus 1 plus 2 is 4. That matches, so that's going to be true. Here we're going to multiply. 2 times 5 is 10, 3 times 9 is 27, does 7 twelfths equal 10 twenty-sevenths? Not in any way that I see. And finally, 4 and 2 thirds equals 5 minus 1 third. Well, it could be. Let's take that 5, let's turn that 5 into 4 and 3 thirds, because it's 4 and 1 is 5. And now we subtract 1 third. 3 minus 1 is 2. So you still have a 4, and you have 4 and 2 thirds. Does that work right there? That is true. So that's going to be a true statement. So 3 are true, and 2 are false. Number 2. May's water bottle had 24 ounces in it. So here it had 24 ounces in it. Awesome. Whole thing, 24, looking great. After she drank X ounces, there were 10 ounces left. So she drank X and had 10 left. Select all the equations that represent the situation. Well, are we taking 24 and putting it in 10 groups? Nope, not dividing it by 10. Are we adding the whole thing in one part to find out the little piece? That doesn't make sense. Are we doing t the whole thing minus what uh, was left to find out what she drank? We certainly could. That would work. How about this? Are we doing what she drank plus what's left to get 24? That would work. X plus 10 equals 24. Are we multiplying 10 by X by 10 groups? Nope, I don't have 10 groups of X, so that's not true. So it's just C and D. Number three, Priya has five pencils, each X inches in length. When she lines the pencils and in, they measure 34.5 inches. So it's like this. She has a pencil that is X, and she has five of these. One, two, three, four, five, right? And they all combine to be 34.5 inches there. So is she doing five plus the same thing one time? Nope, not that. Are we doing five groups of X? One, two, three, four, five groups of X equals the sum total 34. We certainly are. 
Could we do 34.5 and we divide it into 1, 2, 5 groups to find x? We certainly can. We're not subtracting 5, so that doesn't make sense. There's one more on the back side, but it is also incorrect. We're not doing 34.5 times 5. Nope, no way. So just the two are correct there. Number four. A little bit like we had in our work here, we're going to solve um, some get some solutions for each equation. So 2a equals 4.6. So then I think about 2 times what number? If you double the number, it gets you 4.6. Or what is half of 4.6? Half of 4.6 is 2.3. So that's going to be right here with number 3. The next one we have b plus 2 equals 4.6. So 4.6 minus 2 is going to equal b. That's going to be 2.6, which is choice 4. c divided by 2, well, we'll do the opposite, times 2 times 2. That's going to cancel out. 4.6 times 2 is 9.2, which is choice 6. d minus 2, well, let's add 2 to both sides. That cancels, and we end up with 6.6. .6 which is five. Five there for matching. We're going to subtract three eighths. So again, this becomes like one and eight eighths minus three eighths. Because one and eight eighths is still two. Okay, I just take the denominator, make sense as, as the numerator. Then I could subtract eight minus three is five. So I have one and five eighths left over, which is two. Here, I'll multiply by the reciprocal, 8 over 1, 8 over 1, that cancels, 3 times 8 is 24, and that's all there is to it, so it's 7. What number divided by 8 fifths is equal to 1? Well, if you want to get equal to 1, you're going to do something like 2 divided by 2 equals 1, the numbers need to be the same. So what number is this? It's 8 fifths. So 8 fifths divided by 8 fifths is equal to 1. Number five, the daily recommended allowance of vitamin C for a sixth grader is 45 milligrams, 45, 100%. One orange has 75% of it. So here's 75. We could write a 50 right here and a 25. How many milligrams are there in an orange? So an orange is 75%. So one way of solving it would be to say, I have 75% of 45 milligrams. Okay, you could certainly do that, no problem at all. If I wanted to do a double, double number line, it's not an even number, so it's not as nice, but I could do half of 100 is 50, so what is half of 45? Half of 45 is 22.5. Now half of 50 is 25, so what's half of 22.5? It's 11.25. Well now, if I add 25 and 50, I get 75. So if I add those two together, I get 75, which is 33.75. So that could work just fine for 75% of the milligrams of vitamin C are inside of an orange. The last one, there are 90 kids in the band, 20% own their instrument, the rest rent. How many kids own? Well, we're going to do 20% of 90. And 0 0.20, 20%, times 9 equals 18. How many kids rent? Well, a couple ways of doing this. There's only 90 kids. So if I subtract the 18 that own them, what I'm left with is 72. That's how many kids are going to rent them. And the final question asks, based upon the same thing, what percentage of kids rent their instruments? Well, if I know that 20% own their instruments, if I do 100 minus 20, it tells me what's left is 80% of the kids uh, rent their instruments. That's it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.